previously a great chocolate showdown. Hello, bakers. Woo! Ten home bakers began their sweet journey determined to delight the expert judges. Get your sweet on. In the first technique test, Tim had some Tic Tac flow and won with his fiery Atlanta-inspired game board and mango nata tarts. Oh. In the elimination challenge, Meredith blazed a path of her own and won with her desert cake skate. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> But in the end, it was Raphael's blackberry jam walnut cake that left the judges craving one key ingredient. He went home. Now, nine home bakers remain. We got this, guys. But who will be the next to find themselves <sighs> in a crunch? <laughs> I just came off of sweet safety, so I want to make sure I get back in sweet safety. My first technique test was a disaster. So this week, I want to show the judges that I actually am a good baker. When I came in second in the last elimination challenge, you felt darn good. So I'm actually feeling pretty excited today. Hello, bakers. Hi. Hi. I've seen some of your talents. But now, it's time to expand the pantry of your expertise. We want to see you develop exciting new skills, which is why we're setting the bar high. It's time for your next technique test. Bakers, chocolate bars are one of my favorite things in the world to eat. Not only are they easy to make, you can fill them with so many different ingredients. I'm gonna show you a nougat layered 3D. Wow. <laughs> right in front of me in my pot, I have the sugar, glucose, water, honey, and cocoa butter. In my mixing bowl, I have my egg whites. I've whipped those whites to full volume. Our syrup has reached 293 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're gonna add in our egg whites. You wanna allow that syrup to run down the side of the bowl. So we're gonna add our cocoa butter in. At this point here, you can fold in nuts, you can fold in chocolate. What we wanna do is we wanna pour it into the middle of the tray and then spread it. I'm gonna place my rice paper right on top and you can see. Now I have my nougat on the tray. I'm gonna set it aside, allow it to set. So I have my sports car mold. I'm gonna paint it with cocoa butter color. Do the hood pink. Who doesn't like a pink sports car? I'm now gonna cast my mold. So remember when you're casting, you want two layers. It'll ensure that the chocolate is strong enough to hold all the fillings inside and then pour it back in. And then I'm gonna tap and get all that excess chocolate out. Steve definitely makes it look easy, but it's definitely not easy. Our chocolate bar. I have my cookie base, a raspberry sablé. I've made chocolate ganache. And then I have my nougat I made. My ganache will be the first layer, and I can make a level flat surface. We're gonna lay our nougat right in there like that. So I'm gonna do a little ganache, and that'll allow the cookie base to stick. Now, I wanna combine these two. I have tempered chocolate, follow that rim, just like this. We're gonna take our base, just like that, and we're gonna push. See how it's spreading that chocolate out right there? That means that that chocolate is sealed together. When you unmold it, that chocolate will... I've let my chocolate bar set, and it's ready to come out of the mold, so give it a quick bend, like that. Then, I can pop it off like that. Wow. Should we take a look <laughs> under the hood? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. No air bubbles, three distinct layers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chef Steve makes everything look effortless. Bakers, you've just been shown how to make it to fill a 3D chocolate form. Now, we want you to think outside the bar. For your next technique test, you must create a 3D chocolate bar in a unique shape that tells us something about you. Your chocolatey creation must contain a nougat layer and a baked component. The pantry is filled with the finest ingredients to make your desserts. You'll have two and a half hours to complete this test. Bakers, you must impress us with your presentation. We will only taste six desserts. If you have one of our favorite three desserts, sweet safety is yours. And 
and you will not have to bake in the next chocolate elimination challenge. <laughs> And bakers, we have something special in store for the winner of this technique test. The golden whisk. Yeah. The winner of the golden whisk. Use it for immunity once in the next four challenges. Ready, steady, get your sweet on. Oh, hustle it up. Almond flour, almond flour, almond flour. Holy moly. This is a technique test and a half. Two of the most common mistakes when people are making yogurt. One, they're not hitting their temperature. It's below. And then oh. two, they're not raising their egg whites high enough before they put the syrup in. So if you undercook it, your nougat will be runny. Yes. And if you don't, it's dense. Whew. I'm multitasking. The inspiration for this is my mom. Her favorite flower is a rose. And I actually have a rose tattooed on my shoulder in honor of her. My mom and I have both gone through difficult times losing our spouses. And she's always been my rock. For the 3D chocolate bar, I'm making a pistachio nougat dark chocolate rose chocolate bar with lemon white chocolate ganache and a chocolate cookie crumble. All right. So the first thing that I want to get done is the nougat uh, because it needs some time to rest. So we start out with a mixture of sugar, water, gluten. That's going to form the sticky part of the nougat. And then I'm getting my egg whites going. Whip it good. Hey, Meredith, how's it going over there? I am making my nougat. I'm worried. I am inexperienced with a nougat, and I know that it's temperamental. Mine is still so runny. Hopefully, that won't turn out. I chose the cowboy boot because it screams Texas, and I'm from Texas. And it's really big because everything is bigger in Texas. I'm making a blueberry nougat dark chocolate cowboy boot with peach ganache and cowboy cookies. You can find cowboy cookies in all the grocery stores in Texas. I'm taking my nougat out of my mixer, and now I'm going to lay it flat and let it cool. This stuff is sticky. Oh, so sticky. This is definitely a workout. Start dancing a little bit. That's when you know it's good. Nougat dance, Tim. I chose an airplane as my chocolate bar mold because I love to travel. I decided to make a macadamia nut nougat because I've been to Hawaii four times, and Hawaii has the best macadamia nuts. I'm making a macadamia chocolate airplane chocolate bar with a ruby ganache and chocolate crumble. What airline is it? Emma Airlines. <laughs> One hour left, bakers. Oh, no. I go to check on my nougat. It looks fine, but it definitely doesn't feel fine. It's like a super, super wildly sticky. <sighs> nougat is supposed to be soft to the touch, and my nougat is hard. <sighs> that is not good. Oh, God. My nougat and my nougat is hard. I am not in the business of breaking teeth over a nougat, so I got to make that again. Because I'm trying to get that golden whisk. Here's to hoping that it all pans out. I love the colors on your mold. Thank you. So for this technique test, we have to create a 3D chocolate bar with a layer of nougat and different fillings and a shape that means something to us. I chose the teddy bear mold because I have teddy bear tattoos in honor of my children. I accidentally painted angry eyebrows. Whoopsie. This is not what I was going for at all. I am making a ruby chocolate teddy bear filled with a white chocolate and strawberry sugar cookie, raspberry puree, and a white chocolate ganache. So now that I've finished my nougat mixture, it is time for me to start tempering some ruby chocolate. Come on, Miss Ruby. This table tempering is the business. I am loving table tempering. Like, it's my new bestie. I chose a cello mold because I'm a music teacher. That's how I pay my bills. And it's one of my favorite instruments. I am making a strawberry nougat dark chocolate cello chocolate bar with a gold chocolate ganache and a chocolate sugar cookie and hazelnuts. It represents me sweet and a little spicy. So now that the chocolate is tempered, I need to fill my mold. We fill this twice, right? My cello mold is pretty small and there is not a lot of room for my three fillings. That's like really thick. So I'm going to scrape some of my chocolate out because I want as much room as possible to fill it. And hopefully my chocolate cello will make the judges sing. Fill to the brim, good. There we go. As you can see, Dawn is now casting her mold. 
when you cast, you want to fill that mold up right to the rim. And then you want to drop it upside down and you want to bang as much chocolate as you can. If you don't get that, you'll have drips of chocolate in thick areas and thin areas. You want an even coat. All right, dogs, hang out. My inspiration for both the dog and my flavors is my actual dog. <laughs> he's half St. Bernard, and so he's a friendly giant. I love all dogs, but in particular, I love my dog. And I'm putting roasted peanuts in my nougat because my dog loves peanut butter. I am making a roasted peanut nougat dark chocolate dog with a peanut butter ganache and a chocolate cookie crunch. And as a props builder in film, I've had to do a lot of molding and casting, so I'm feeling pretty to fill it with peanut butter ganache, and then I'm gonna top it off with a nougat. Just put in my cookie crunch now. All right, little puppy, be good to me. I'm just working on my lemon white chocolate ganache. I feel good so far. I'm feeling fairly confident that this is gonna turn out really well. Oh, shoot. Oh, my ganache refuses to thicken up. If this ganache does not get to the right consistency, when the judges cut into the chocolate bar, it's gonna be a big mess. And also, it's going to make it difficult to put the two sides of my chocolate bar together. This is definitely starting to throw me off course. 30 minutes left, bakers! Oh, my gosh. 30 minutes, we can do it. And with a little chocolate, hopefully the mold will stick and stay together. I'm so scared. All right, it's time for me to start layering this thing up. Try not to overfill it there. Please be sad. Yay! Ah, oh, she came out. Bakers, five minutes left. You can do it. Let's go. Woo! Come on, Bakers. Start it. Five minutes. I take my chocolate bar and I begin to lift the back part of the mold off. Come on. It is not bush. Come on. My camera will not come out the mold. Shh. I know that I can't give up, so I have to keep trying. So I began to spray as much freeze spray as possible, like it was hairspray. Is it such thing as over freeze spraying? The chocolate will release from the mold if it gets cold as possible. And it's gonna be a photo finish. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. The time of the clock is really starting to tick down. I have to just go with the ganache that I have, even though I don't think it's quite as set as I want it to be. So I open the mold and I realize that the two sides are not set. Uh. So I go to pop each one out of the mold, and the first one comes out and I'm filling, and then as the second one comes out, it actually cracks. Oh, oh, it's disappointing. I am rushing to get my chocolate out of this mold. I pop the top off and immediately notice one of my wings is cracked. Ooh, yikes. I take some of the white chocolate and try to do a quick repair, but things only get worse because the other wing cracks. Oh, crap. This plane is not gonna fly. Oh. One minute, bakers! Get those chocolate bars out of the molds! Come on! Come on, on bakers! We got this! Ow! This is very nerve-wracking. Please. Please, please, please come out. There we go. Woo! There we go. Six, Ten, nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up! Woo! 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 We got that. Yeah. I am so frustrated because I felt I created this beautiful chocolate bar to honor my mom, and here it is, broken in front of me. Well done, bakers. Come around and take a closer look at what you've made. Remember, we will only be tasting six of your desserts. I'm so happy with my results. Judges, I want that sweet safety. Not only is sweet safety on the line, but there's also the golden whisk. And I really want that whisk. Bakers, we asked you to give us a nougat filled three unique shape. Now remember, we will only be tasting six desserts. Kristen, you're up first. Please bring us your chocolate bar. I made a roasted almond nougat milk chocolate caramel candy bar. And on the inside, I have a dark chocolate ganache and a coconut pecan tea cake. Well, Kristen, you gave us a photo finish. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you. Although I see a little bit of cracking, your seams are actually in pretty good shape. Mm-hmm. Thank so you. So inside this okay. Okay. <laughs> chocolate bar. Be <laughs> clean. Yes, yes, yes. yes. 
Kristen, your choice of colors was beautiful. You vastly improved your plating. Thank you. Your nougat took me a lot longer to chew it than a normal nougat. The sugar was cooked a little too long. That's why it's a little chewy and tough in my mouth. Okay. But that said, you've built a beautiful complement of flavors. Thank you. I really tried my best or deserve to be here. And that's a pretty picture. The next chocolate bar we'd like to try belongs to Donna. Please bring us your chocolate bar. I made a roasted peanut nougat dark chocolate dog with a peanut butter ganache and a chocolate cookie crunch. I chose this because I love my dog. I just adore him. Well, I have to say, it's enticing. It's supposed to make you smile, and this puppy dog certainly does. I think we can see your ganache is barely set. The nougat didn't reach its full meringue volume, it feels yeah. like. And it's almost more like a taffy than it is a nougat, which should have an airiness to it. The nougat and the ganache tasted beautiful, but I had to dig around for the cookie crunch. But I think you did a fantastic job on the casting of the dog. It's shiny. Your chalk, well done. I'm so happy that my chocolate was tempered. That's like ding, 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 ding. Thank you. I'll take it. And the next 3D chocolate bar we'd like to try belongs to Tim. Please bring us your creation. Teddy bears mean a lot to me. If you've paid attention to my tattoos, I am covered in teddy bears. They all represent my children. And so I made a mixed berry nougat ruby chocolate teddy bear filled with white chocolate ganache, raspberry puree, and a white chocolate strawberry sugar cookie. I was above the bear's eyes, so it kind of came out looking a lot angrier than I wanted him to look. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think angry bear is adorable. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, your seals were perfect, and then you shaved it off, and you made it look really nice. You nailed it. You can see the distinct layers. I thought the flavor of that nougat, it shone. And I am thankful that it did have that tartness of all that freeze-dried fruit in there because your white chocolate ganache and your cookie crumble, that the two balanced each other out. I am so proud that this little teddy bear wowed the judges. And the next one belongs to Meredith. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I made a blueberry nougat dark chocolate cowboy boot with peach ganache and cowboy cookies, which have coconut, pecans, chocolate chips, and oatmeal. It sounds like we're going to expect some big, bold flavors. I hope so. Meredith, you cast a beautiful chocolate cowboy boot. I love the simplicity of it, beautiful layering, I thought that your nougat was cooked perfectly. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's lucky. Unfortunately, it was lacking the flavor I wanted to taste. Your nougat, it looks visually very attractive because the use of blueberries in there almost studs it like pieces of jewelry. However, blueberry has very little flavor. So you would have done well to complement that with something just a little tart. Pay a little bit of attention on how you balance your flavors. Although it might have needed a bit more flavor and balance, it still was pretty good. There are only two desserts left to taste. I want sweet safety so bad. There are only two desserts left to taste. And the next dessert we'd like to try belongs to Charlie. So I made a strawberry nougat dark chocolate cello chocolate bar with and the chocolate sugar cookie with candied ginger and hazelnuts. Ooh, that is quite a combination. Well, Charlie, even though you were working with a small mold, you managed to get some lovely, clean, distinct layers in oh, there. Thank you. Charlie, 
your nugget. You cooked it perfectly. The texture was silky. It was smooth. Well done. Now, it is uneven. Your bottom layer of the mold is a lot thinner than your top. Because it's such a small mold and you have so much chocolate, that bitterness of the chocolate takes away from the flavor. However, the ginger note was there, and the textures were great as well. I think we just needed to turn the volume up on the strawberry, but ultimately, you have given us a symphony of flavor. Oh, thank you. I am so happy. <laughs> the final dessert we're going to taste belongs to... Allie, please bring us your dessert. I made a hazelnut nougat dark with an orange and chocolate cake with a hazelnut praline and a blood orange ganache. Allie, your pumpkin is perfect on the outside. There's a great shine to it. Your chocolate. Let's see if it's in temper. <laughs> that even scared me. Your casting is perfectly even, but when you put them to, you had to have sealed it by putting chocolate on either side of the mold because now there's too much chocolate in there and the chocolate overpowers. I'm pleased that you use hazelnut because I love hazelnut. However, I am missing the blood orange. I feel like the balance of flavors is probably the only thing that could hurt me in getting that sweet golden whisk. Bakers, we asked you for a nougat-filled chocolate bar in a shape that had special meaning to you. Some of you really raised the bar with perfectly temporary nougat and delectable baking. But a few of you failed to make nougat the star of your bar. Charlie, Kristen, and Tim, please step forward. The three of you had our favorite desserts of this technique test. <laughs> <laughs> but who gets the golden whisk? Who gave us a chocolate bar that was perfectly cast and had a chewy nougat. It was layer upon layer of flavor, bar none. Congratulations, Tim. Oh! <laughs> so Tim, we are not mad at your angry Teddy chocolate bar. <laughs> it was very, very delicious. <laughs> Come grab your golden whisk, and the three of you can take a seat in sweet safety. took a bunch of risk, but it paid off with the whisk. <laughs> that means the rest of you will all be baking in the chocolate elimination challenge that will send one of you home. Bakers, both chocolate and cheese can be a decadent finish to a wonderful meal. And while they may not seem combination, chocolate and cheese can make for an intriguing and luxurious union. For your next chocolate elimination challenge, we want you to create an elegant plated dessert that combines chocolate with cheese. To find out what cheese you'll be baking with, please come up and select the cheese knife. I am so intimidated pairing chocolate with cheese. It's something that I've never done before. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Emma. What cheese did you get? I got Parmigiano Reggiano. I selected Gruyere. Meredith, what cheese? I picked goat cheese. Ashley. I have aged white cheddar. Allie, what cheese did you get? I got Manchego. And Donna, what cheese did you get? It looks like I got triple cream brie. All of these cheeses can pair with chocolate in some sensational ways. We are really excited about how you push your flavor boundaries. Bakers, 
The pantry is fully stocked with the finest ingredients and chocolate. Two and a half hours to complete your desserts. <sighs> the baker who presents us with our least favorite dessert will be going home. Ready? Steady? Get your chocolate on. Guys, come on. You got this. <laughs> Let's do this, guys. I am going to incorporate manchego. I am making a dark chocolate manchego Paris breast. I think I'm going to start on my shoe because it needs time to dry. I'm making a manchego shoe pastry with slivered on. Manchego dark chocolate pastry cream with the hazelnut praline, white wine, poached pear. But every component of my dish I have never made before. I'm taking a huge risk here. I could be creating the best possible plate out there or a total disaster. The idea of pairing cheese with chocolate in a plated dessert is where the adventure begins. So I'm interested to see the other ingredients that they use because that can draw the chocolate flavor out and it can draw the cheese flavor out. And I hope our bakers understand the parallels between cheese and chocolate. They're both fat-based, so in terms of applying baking techniques, treat the cheese like chocolate. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Brie's a nice mild taste, so I'm going to be making a whipped white chocolate brie tartlet with some roasted grapes and a white chocolate brie ganache. For my tart shell, I chose a brown sugar shortbread crust because it's a good complement to the whipped white chocolate and brie filling. I hope it's good enough to keep me in the competition. Just hoping. So this is going to be challenging. I'm making a dark chocolate Parmesan tart with a Parmesan crust, raspberry Parmesan Chantilly cream, honey roasted pistachios, and a milk chocolate Parmesan sauce. I don't know how it's going to turn out. Everybody is so intense oh, today, you. yes. You got this, Ashley. I'm using aged white cheddar. Ashley needs to balance that flavor out and make sure it doesn't overpower her chocolate choice. Yeah. Instinctively, I would gravitate towards gold chocolate. I'm making a white cheddar cheese vanilla sponge cake with a white chocolate ganache with cheddar cheese and sauteed apples because cheddar and apples is a great combination. And a golden chocolate. She cute. Mm-hmm. Gruyere's got a strong flavor. I am making a Gruyere religieuse with a shoe pastry with the Gruyere incorporated into it. Gruyere relates to Swiss cheese in terms of the flavor, the salt level, and the way it melts. Mm -hmm. And also I'm making espresso dark chocolate whipped cream, a dark chocolate ganache, and a Gruyere cheese sauce, and then some tempered chocolate to hopefully get that oh snap from Chef Steve. I am starting with my shoe. Okay, little guys. I got lucky because I have goat cheese, which is one of my favorite cheeses. I put on toast, pasta, pizza. Why not make it dessert? I am making a dark chocolate brownie with a goat cheese swirl, with a lemon goat cheese custard, raspberry coulis, dark chocolate ganache, and goat cheese by itself is not sweet at all, so swirling it in there should temper the sweetness of the brownie, because it's tangy like yogurt. Those are looking cute. I have my shoe in the oven, and now I'm going to make the chocolate pastry cream and in some magical way. I would say the hardest cheese is what Ali has, manchego. Mm -hmm. With its grassy notes, a little bit farmy. Mm -hmm. I decide to add manchego cheese into my dark chocolate pastry cream, but I have no measurements on how much cheese I'm throwing in here. I'm just grating, tossing it in more. Fingers crossed. I've got cheese flying everywhere. <laughs> now that the tart shells are finished, time to move on to my filling. First, I'm going to combine my brie and my Greek yogurt. Oh my gosh, flying yogurt and cheese. And then I'm going to add my melted white chocolate. Melt for me. I'm adding orange, a little bit of acidity. Yum, that tastes good. But as I'm looking at my filling and it's whipping, I can see it's starting to get grainy. Oh no, no, no. I feel like I whipped this too long. Bakers, you have one hour left. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As I'm looking at my filling and it's whipping, I can see it's starting to get grainy. I think I whipped it a little too long, so I'm just going to be safe, and I'm just going to redo it because that clock is counting down, and I don't want to be eliminated. For this chocolate elimination challenge, we have to pair the cheese with chocolate. So it's some cheese, some chocolate, some anxiety. I have my white cheese cake done. 
Now, I'm about to table temper some gold chocolate for my chocolate cheese truffles with black sea salt. I want these to be bites that are salty and sweet and crunchy and soft. Already starting to set. That's a good sign. Bakers, you have 30 minutes left on the clock. I've got my tart, I've got my ganache, I've got my pistachios, and I'm working on my raspberry chantilly cream. Fancy. Fancy. 15 Come minutes. On. So I'm gonna do a twill. It's a sugar and oil mixture that's dropped on the pan and it creates like a super thin, wafery, see-through cookie. So now I have to color my twill. This is the very first time I am making a twill, but I wanna show the judges something elegant and tasteful. It's actually working. All right, tart shells. Let's do this. Five minutes! Come on, Come on in, starting to make me nervous. Jeez Louise, time is need my brownie to come out and be beautiful. Time to start collating. We got this, guys. I need to make sure that this looks so good. You got this, let's do come it. On. Come on, come on, Oh my goodness. 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. up. Out of this plate because I made a plan and I brought it to life. Bakers, we asked you to plate a dessert that pairs chocolate with cheese. Emma, you're up first. I made a dark chocolate Parmesan tart filled with dark chocolate ganache as well as a raspberry Parmesan Chantilly cream. You did a very good job on your presentation. Thank you. Emma, your ganache, full of chocolate flavor. Yes. Silky, smooth, melt in my mouth. I loved it. That being said, your tart shell, I got your Chantilly. I got it. For how small you piped that Chantilly, it packed a punch. <laughs> I agree. Your Chantilly cream was beautiful. I wish there was much, much more of it. Next time, think about the balance of each forkful that you intend anyone to eat. I think I got caught up in making it look pretty and I didn't really think about them tasting it in one bite. Donna, it's time for us to taste your dessert. I made for you a whipped white chocolate brie tartlet with some roasted grapes and brie ganache and hopefully some tempered white chocolate garnish. <laughs> <laughs> First impressions, it's a lovely plate. You've got some nice groupings with some nice color contrast. Shall we give it a try? Get in. Donna, your brown sugar crust, if it delivered a nice crispness, excellent choice. You tempered white chocolate. Should we try it? Yes, please. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Nice work. Thank you. But your dessert did not, did any of the grape overpowered your dish. And you're dealing with a high fat triple cream brie and white chocolate, which is for the most part, cocoa butter. The two just could not live. And essentially we have a split cream filling. I really hope that this tart is good enough to keep me here in this competition. So I'm feeling a little nervous. Allie, it's time for us to taste your dessert. I made a dark chocolate manchego Paris breast with a manchego dark chocolate pastry cream with white wine poached pear and a coral twill. When it comes to the plating, I really like it. <gasps> Yay. Allie, your sugar twill there, that caught my eye. The shoe was cooked beautifully. And my goodness, the Chantilly cream. <laughs> I could eat that just by itself. How much manchego did you put into that pastry cream? Oh, I measured with my heart throughout this whole competition. <laughs> I love that. Well, you struck a beautiful balance between the use of the cheese and the chocolate and for us, the biggest obstacle. You've delivered a delicious dessert. Thank you. Mike, let's taste your dessert. I made a Gruyere religious with a Gruyere choux pastry. And then inside there's a vanilla pastry cream, a dark chocolate ganache, an espresso chocolate whipped cream, 
Mike, do you know what a religieuse is supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like a nun. Yep, a little nun. The chocolate is meant to look like the habit, and in the day, they would have a white ruffly collar. In terms of the appearance of a class, you have hit the mark. Thank you. Mike, well done. Thank you. Now, your shoe pastry and the filling was beautifully balanced. We got the Gruyere. In terms of the dessert execution, did it need to stay in the oven an extra 10 minutes? Yes, for two reasons. To get that bigger hollow in the center and the caramelization on the outside. But dark chocolate was the correct choice. Well, let's talk about the chocolate. You think this is in temper? I think we're about to find out. Oh, snap! <laughs> <laughs> I feel incredible. This is the kind of bake that I was hoping to present in this competition. Meredith, please bring us your dessert. I made a dark chocolate brownie with a goat cheese swirl, and there's a goat cheese custard. It's a lovely plate. Meredith, your brownie was fantastic. It was full of chocolate flavor. It was moist. Thank you. But I didn't get the goat cheese in your brownie. That said, your goat cheese custard was ethereal. It just melted on the tip of your tongue, and it contrasted nicely with the brownie. Thank you. There's a lot on the line here. I am not ready to go home. Ashley, please bring us your dessert. I made a white cheddar cheese vanilla sponge cake with a golden chocolate white cheddar cheese truffle. What I do like is giving us height as a dessert. Thank you. Ashley, the texture of your cake and that brilliant color and delicate crumb structure, beautiful. The cheese did something interesting to it. Basically, I would think that was a scone, which I love. But did I get cheese necessarily in your cake scone? No. Did I get the cheese in the ganache? Yes. Did I get enough? No. OK. Ashley, this is not a trouble. This is a cube of cheese dipped in chocolate. This was an easy way out. There's no tech, but the white aged cheddar and the gold chocolate is a perfect match. Thank you. I did not do my best, so I'm nervous. Bakers, we asked you to find flavor alchemy in a plated dessert that combined chocolate with cheese. Some of you gave us decadent flavor collaborations, but a few of you failed to please with your chocolate and cheese dessert. When I call your name, please step forward. Meredith. Allie. The two of you had our favorite desserts of this challenge. Yay! But the best dessert of this challenge united chocolate and cheese in a combination that was truly sublime. And that dessert belongs to Ali. It feels so great to win. All my risks have paid off. Emma and Mike, the two of you, are safe. Congratulations. Please go join the others. Ashley and Donna, unfortunately, your desserts were not as successful. You were on the right track with your combination of gold chocolate and aged cheddar. However, we found your chocolate dipped cheese overly simplistic. And the flavor of cheddar in your sponge was far too mild. Donna, we were drawn to your pretty and modern plating. However, the ingredients that were meant to be the star of your plate, brie and white chocolate, faded into the background. And sadly, your cream filling was split. Unfortunate of you must leave this kitchen.
The baker who is going home is... Donna. Ashley, that means you are safe. You may join the others. Donna, you captured our attention with your glimmering decor and adventurous flavors. We hope you continue your baking journey because we know that with your passion, your desserts will be as good. <laughs> This was an amazing and priceless learning experience, and it hasn't ended for me yet. This is just the beginning of my chocolate journey. Next week on Great Chocolate Showdown. Something's definitely burning. Ooh. The home bakers are challenged to turn a flaky favorite Ooh. into fine art. Flawless. In the elimination challenge, <laughs> the bakers slide into a whole new taste sensation. It's bitter. Ooh. Only those who strike a tasty balance I love it. will succeed. That's just bananas. Wait a minute. Are you kidding me?
Yeah. <laughs> 